Hi, it's V. Happy National Coming Out Day. If any of you watching are planning on coming out today, I'm rooting for you. It's going to be fine. You are amazing. No matter what happens, you're still going to be amazing. And there will be people who love and appreciate and respect you for who you are. And the most important thing is that you love and respect and appreciate yourself. And you're worthy of that. For those of you still in the closet, um, my heart goes out to you. It's a tough place to be, uh, hiding a big piece of yourself. But one day you'll be ready, and it's okay to not be there yet. There are some circumstances where it's not safe to really come out, where your housing is in jeopardy and some other circumstances. So hang in there and it's all going to be okay. So I hope you guys enjoy these few coming out stories I'm going to share. Uh, the first one's about how I first came out to some friends. The next one is going to be about how I first came out to a couple people in college, and then how I came out to my entire floor in college, and then how I came out to my father. So this first story I wrote about in high school, and I'm going to read what I wrote about it because it has some cool details, I think, and is fun to look at my high school self-writing. Maybe you don't think it's fun, but <laughs> my channel. So um, I'm going to read that, and then I'm going to elaborate on what happened, because in that story that I wrote, I didn't actually talk about the coming out part of it. I just talked about everything else, and it's all pretty darn dramatic. Uh, I was around these friends, and they were kind of enemies too. They bullied me. They were from this group uh, at church and I really wanted their approval. I put a lot of stock into what they thought of me and they just kept rejecting me and making fun of me and bullying me, which paradoxically just made me want their approval more. One of these guys Gordon, I call him in the story, uh, I had this kind of ginormous crush on, which took me a while to figure out. At first, I was just thinking that I really thought he was cool and wanted to be his friend and wanted to be like him, but no, it was something more. But this, this story starts with me being very angry at him, for him giving me the cold shoulder, um, tricking me and doing really crappy stuff. So it starts with me being pretty angry at him. So here we go. I will explain the rest of the story once we get to the end. The Woods. Sam invited me. There was going to be a get together out by the Avalon. He asked me to bring some stuff. I agreed, but I needed to know one thing. Is Gordon going to be there? I asked. No, Sam answered. He better not be. Sam laughed. I knew that if I drank anything around Gordon, I wouldn't be able to control myself. Sam assured me that he wouldn't be there. Our campsite was near a group of buildings. Boards covered the windows. The abandoned mental hospital. Cops circled every hour making sure that no one disturbed this restricted section of Lexington property. The place was set apart, forbidden, so naturally it was a hot spot for secret parties and illegal teenage activity. I had been in before. I had come with Sam and Jackson. The children's ward and the administrative building were relatively easy to get into. You just had to pry one of the boards off and you were all set. We went down to the file rooms and looked through the papers and then even farther down to the boiler room. The whole floor down there was flooded with multiple feet of water, all laced with a reeking maroon layer of mold. We went to the roof. We climbed out the top of the buildings and looked out over the grounds. There were underground passages connecting all of the buildings. It was impossible to get in them. But people say that once a crazy escaped from the men's ward into a tunnel. They say that he got hold of an axe and attacked one of the women there. 
They say he chopped her into 11 separate pieces and buried her in different places around the grounds. There were several graveyards. There were no names on the headstones, just patient numbers. It was a cool spot. A couple of times we saw cops circle, but they never saw us. We never got caught. But that night we weren't there for the buildings or to explore the bounds of the cruel and unusual place that sat so near our campsite. That night we were there to drink. It was Sunday night of the Memorial Day weekend. I brought the beer, a 20 pack of Heineken's and some Red Bull. Sam brought a bottle of cheap whiskey. There were six of us, including myself. Jackson, John, Ron, Sam, and Gordon. When I arrived at 11.30, he was sitting there by the fire. I thought you said he wasn't going to be here, I whispered to Sam. I thought so too, Sam said with an ironic smile. Gordon didn't look at me. His disgusting face stared into the flames. I wanted to do something, to yell at him. I wanted him to feel some sense of guilt. I wanted an apology. After the first two beers, it started to come out. I was barely tipsy, but I only needed a couple of drinks to feel comfortable flipping him the bird. But that was not enough. I wanted revenge. Payback for the month he hadn't spoken to me, for the pain that he'd caused, and for his solid refusal to give me an explanation. I wanted to get drunk again, drunk like I had at church, but I did not want to be the only one there. So I started challenging people. Go shot for shot with me. Anyone. Come on. I knew that I would get more tanked than anyone else. I weighed the least, and I had barely eaten anything all day, but it wasn't about winning. Sam agreed, and the real drinking began. We took shot after shot of the whiskey. It burned and made me gag, but I needed it, needed the release, the exemption from the rules of socialization. Soon I was running my mouth off. Fuck you, Gordon, I said. Why did you ignore me? Fuck you, fuck Gordon, fuck Gordon, fuck Gordon, you are such a bitch. I continued to drink, more and more. We drank until we finished the bottle, and then we switched to beer. I hate you. Fuck Gordon, fuck Gordon. I stumbled over and took a swing at him. I missed and crashed to the ground, my face slamming against the forest floor. I stood and tried again. He dodged me and I fell once more, but I would not stop. After four or five attempts, he began to threaten me. Sam stepped between us. He was rather drunk. Calm down, guys, Sam said. I was too wasted to compute the difference between the two of them, and I said, fuck Gordon again, and I punched Sam in the face. He pushed me to the ground. Sam pulled my arms behind my back. I struggled to get up, but I could not. I gave up, he let go, and I began to puke. I hurled. My body convulsed in a violent heave. My head thrust forward and my mouth spread wide. The whiskey, Red Bull, and acid gushed out in a greenish-yellow fountain, pouring out my mouth and onto the ground. My insides were pulled, yanked from out of me. I puked over and over, my head aimed at the ground, the liquid gushing, then dripping, and gushing again. I felt disgusting, vile, inhuman and they all stared at me what had i done i'd been happy before i met him what had i become i passed out dead on the ground so <coughs> also in that pretty humiliating series of events i told gordon that i wanted to rail him up the ass and i also told my friends that uh, my girlfriend at the time I would want to have sex with her if I uh, if she was a man um, I said some other things as well uh, it obviously didn't go very well as it shouldn't have with that kind of behavior uh, but this was all just kind of pent up inside of me it's no real excuse but it came out in a angry burst when I got drunk so they let me uh, just sleep on the ground and they woke me up the next morning by throwing little rocks at me 
and most of them didn't talk to me again. <laughs> that was that story. Uh, I do not recommend getting drunk and accidentally telling people that you are gay. I didn't even remember it the next morning. Uh, I like had a suspicion, but I didn't remember what I had said. I vaguely remember trying to punch him. <laughs> Uh, then, so let's move on to a slightly more happy one. I was in college. It was my freshman year, first semester, probably like at least halfway through. Again, I was drinking. I got back to my dorm and this girl on the floor saw that I was pretty drunk and came to make sure I was okay. We were kind of friends and she uh, held the trash can while I again puked. Don't recommend getting that drunk. Um. So I told her I was just like rocking back and forth and I was saying, Shifra, I love you. Shifra, I'm sorry. Shifra, I'm gay. And that's how I came out to the first person pretty much in college. And she was super supportive. And uh, someone out in the hall overheard in the morning. I didn't remember coming out, but it was good. I um, felt accepted. It made it less scary to come out to the next people who thankfully I was sober to tell. My next big coming out story, at least big for me, was I came out to my entire floor. We were all in one class. It was called Community Service and Leadership. It was this like intentional living floor. And uh, we had this paper that we had to kind of express what we believed in it and just lay down kind of what drove us. And I'll post this paper in the description. But I wrote about how I wasn't gay and I didn't believe in love and all this stuff. And then at the end, I'm like, this whole paper's a lie. So <laughs> it's very silly. But that was really fun. And everyone was really supportive and like, really made me feel accepted and loved. Then my final short story is how I told my father it was on Thanksgiving break that first year. I decided to come out to him in the car. We were driving, I was driving, and I w was subconsciously speeding up more and more as I prepared to tell him. I think I chose coming out in the car because I didn't have to look at him while I said it. And I just very simply said, Dad, I'm gay. And he responded reflexively, really supportively. He tried to be relatable. Um, he told me that it was going to be a tough life. Um, but he didn't say anything like, oh, this is messed up. He didn't cry or anything. Then the days following, he did send some emails about what God really thinks. And uh, that wasn't too great. But... It was off my chest and I didn't have to hide this huge part of myself from my dad anymore, even though it hasn't even now become like perfect, but I feel better where it is than if I had continued to not tell him. So those are a few stories. I hope that your coming outs, if you're preparing to come out, go a little more smoothly than my first couple. And again, happy National Coming Out Day. I love you all. Goodbye, my beautiful NBs, my strong bipolar friends too, and all of you allies, brazen and free, so long and blessed be.